Have you ever wondered what's going on in here when I design a project? Hello? 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 Video is sponsored by Maso, makers of the Maso CNC controller. Eight hardware and software package to run your machine with no PC required. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. You know, CNC machines are really great, but without ideas for projects, they're really pretty useless. And this episode, or this little series of episodes, I'm going to take you through how I start off a design idea and take it through to the conclusion. And for this example, I'm going to use my Maso in a suitcase. Now, I demonstrated uh, a couple of episodes back uh, I showed you the Maso in a suitcase and I explained to you the fact that I needed the machine or the Maso to be portable so that I can use it both inside for uh, learning purposes, uh, tutorial purposes and um, I need to be able to bring it back out into the workshop so that I can use it here as well. Now with this in mind um, I built it into a suitcase and everything was going swimmingly until I um, brought this here. Now this is actually a touch screen and it integrates really well with Maso and makes using it that much easier. But the problem is I really need the both things to be in the same package. So that's the starting idea. What do I need to make and what is my vision for it? So in this case I'm thinking of some sort of a console. Now I originally thought of a freestanding console that um, had everything integrated into it. The touch screen, the Maso, uh, the con motor controllers, the spindle speed control, everything. But for me that's not practical because I need to be able to pick it up and take it inside and I'm not lugging all that stuff inside so I need to pare it down to the absolute minimum. So with that in mind I need to keep my idea of a plug-in uh, connector here like this one here parallel port output to my Gecko drive uh, to my machine. Uh, so I want to also plug in my spindle, my homing switches and potentially the light as well. I'm still thinking about that. And, of course, my uh, screens. I need to be able to plug in my uh, screen at the back here. So those are sort of ideas that I have at the moment on what I need. So let's look at this in a bit more in depth. First thing is my uh, touch screen here. And this is actually going to be the heart of it. Everything will flow from the touch screen here. It's a certain size so that's going to determine a minimum size for the console unit. And the most important part of this screen here is my viewing angle. If I set it too shallow I'm going to get a really good view of the lights above me reflecting into my eyes. You already have here a reflection on the, that I can see on the screen here that uh, is of the lights from above. But of course I get a different view. When I'm standing here looking at it, uh, I, if it's too steep I'll see the lights above. If it's too shallow, too vertical, I will see the windows that are directly behind me here and it's going to be uh, very distracting. So I've sort of tilted this here to an angle that looks good to me. And uh, Having determined the angle, I can get out my bevel box here and measure that angle and I can see it's around about 63 degrees. I've got to bear in mind as well that it's, I'm going to be a bit uh, lower in respect to the screen because it's going to sit higher here. So uh, that's the first step. 63 degrees is going to be the angle that this monitor is going to sit on. W one of the things about this monitor is it does have a lip here and it's going to be a collector of dust, but there's not much I can do about it. Whether I put it vertical uh, or lay the damn thing flat, it's still going to collect dust, but um, the steeper it is, the less dust it should hopefully collect. Now, I need to make this here 
accessible. I don't want this here inside the unit because I need to be able to video it. I need to be able to see it clearly. So for that, I'm going to put it right on the back of this unit here. And so it's going to be exposed. It's going to be visible. And uh, on there, I want to have my power module. So I've got access to them and also Maso itself. I don't need to see this here. This is a uh, VGA to HDMI converter. That's because my TV is HDMI. The touch screen I brought actually has an HDMI input. And I also have an HDMI recorder. Of course, I've only got one output, so I needed to get one of these here. And this is uh, one HDMI input and four HDMI outputs. So that's going to give me enough to run my screen monitor and HDMI recorder all in one. This has to be hidden inside the unit and I need to bring out the HDMI outputs uh, to sockets so I can plug everything in. Now I also went and found some nice looking DIN, round, DIN rail uh, relays these are 12 volt to match the power supply for my Maso. So they're going to mount, I'm going to extend the DIN rail here and I'm going to mount these on that DIN rail. Likewise, I also went and got some more industrial looking relays. These plug in and uh, I'm going to mount these on the DIN rail as well. And I have these relays as well. I know what you're thinking, how many relays does this guy really need? Well, these ones here are different from the others. Uh, the others will just simply connect to the relay outputs here. But uh, these ones uh, should be able to be driven by the TTL output signals and give me, well, more relays. Now, I brought also a tower light. I already had an output set up here to use with the tower light. I haven't wired it up yet. But... Um, I may integrate this into the unit itself or make it externally uh, able to be plugged in. I haven't decided yet, but uh, I do have the tower light and that's something that uh, I'm making provision for either in the unit or external to the unit. Switches. I brought a heap of different colored switches. I got about six of these white ones here and about another six of different colored ones. And my plan here is that uh, the colored ones are going to activate various features uh, like spindle start, spindle stop, uh, homing. Uh, that's going to be a really useful one. And then the white ones, I got, uh, I'm going to set these here up so that they can run uh, auto load programs ready to run for me if I've got routines like leveling the table, I might want to just have a button I can push there and it'll load me a program for just leveling my table, something along those lines. I also have an e-stop switch. This is going to mount onto uh, the front panel there so that I can just simply push it and reset it as necessary. It hasn't arrived yet, but I've got a uh, small flush mount USB uh, socket that I'll be able to plug my USB stick in to bring that to the front of the panel uh, so when I want to run a program I can just plug my USB stick in there, load the program and away I go. I have this here, it's going to be, uh, it's got six uh, sockets there, I'm going to have two HDMI, spindle, uh, homing sensor, possibly the light and I've got one spare, I'm not sure what I'm going to use that for yet uh, so that's going to be uh, put on the side of the unit, so I'll be able to plug everything in. Likewise, the D25 here, that will also need to go onto the socket, so I can just simply plug uh, my uh, machine into it, and that'll get my motor drives uh, running. I have here also a 12 volt to 5 volt converter. That's going to give me the 5 volt I need to run. Uh, this unit here and I'll probably run the HDMI converter off that as well rather than loading up the USB power supply built into Maso. Um, so that's what that's for. 
I have here various sensors. Uh, in this case, this one is the uh, one of the homing sensors. I've got both MPN and PMP, which I'll um, will be able to connect uh, for demonstration purposes on how to set up homing switches. And uh, at the moment, that seems to be about all the rubbish I've brought so far for this project. Now, a lot of that stuff has to go inside the unit, not knowing exactly how big it's going to be at this stage. Uh, I'm going to design things on the fly. So my first step in designing something like this here is to design the parts that I can, which in this case will be the sides. Everything will flow from the sides. I now know the angle at which the monitor is going to sit. So now I can design the sides for this unit. And once I've done that, I can start positioning things and see what it's going to look like and sort of design outward from there. And that's just the way I work. Um, I'm sure there are much better ways of doing it, but I find that designing on the fly works for me. So now that we have a rough idea of what I'm thinking, let's take a look at the drawing. And here it is here. This is a basic outline of the side of uh, the console that I'm looking at building, and that's, at this stage, the only parts I'm going to machine. Once I've got these machined, I can then look at it with the equipment I've got and figure out how wide I want to make it and sort of proceed from there. So when we look at this here, we have the sloping face. Now that's that 63 degree uh, face that I want to put the monitor on. And the monitor will simply sit in here like this. Now just remember we're looking at this side on. Now along here is a sloping face and that's where I'm going to put my switches. And for that, I'm going to be using this here. It's a piece of uh, aluminium that I have sitting in the workshop, which I think will just be ideal for um, use in this project. It's quite thick and should be nice and rigid. Just ideal for putting those switches into. I've already made the length of this here to suit the aluminium I've got. Now you'll notice we then come down. That's actually uh, quite deep probably a lot deeper than you think it should be but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of structure in here now there's going to be a cavity here and that is so that I can get the keyboard and the mouse into it now these are both wireless devices the keyboard actually has a trackpad on it as well which is quite handy and uh, they're going to store in this cavity here. Now the cavity is 200 millimeters deep, while the keypad and mouse are only 100 millimeters deep. I'll, of course, make the width of the unit at least wide enough to suit those of the keyboard and mouse. In here, the height I've got is enough for the switches to protrude through such that they will not hit the bottom. This is going to be the very base of the unit, and you can see the side actually overhangs a little bit. So when it's freestanding, I can sit it on something, uh, it'll rest on the outside edges. But when it's sitting on the stand I have in the, in the workshop, uh, it should settle down into that a little bit, and hopefully that will hold it a little bit better, make it a bit steadier. Proceeding up the back here, is where I plan to actually mount the Masso and the peripheral things like the relays and the power distribution strip. So they're going to go onto the back of the unit here where they'll be visible and easy enough for me to record and show things uh, as I connect them to the unit. Inside here I've got quite a bit of a cavity. I'm going to have to come up with some sort of internal structure here. And that's where I'm going to put my uh, power supplies, uh, my HDMI splitter box, and my HDMI to a VGA to HDMI converter, and anything else that uh, needs to be hidden, they can go inside the unit there. Now on one side I have to put a cutout, and that's going to be here. This larger cutout here is to suit this. Uh, this is where I'm going to have my two HDMIs, my spindle, and my uh, homing switcher will go there. Possibly the uh, the light, possibly not. I'll 
still deciding on that. And of course, speaking of the light, when we look at the top here, there is potentially where it could go. So I've got the light here, it's 50 millimeters in diameter, as is this circle here, and it could just sit running across the top of the box um, and might look quite good there. And again, once I've got the box made, I'll be able to sit it there and see what I think, whether it's a, that's a good location for it or not. Now, these aren't the only ideas I have for this project. For instance, I'm going to put some handles on the side. I'll be able to grab it and carry it out to the workshop or back into the house as needed. So let's uh, go back and have a look at it. And I'm sure that before the uh, project is finished, there'll be a lot more changes made. But as it stands, this is where I'm at. I have now mirrored the uh, piece. And uh, on the right hand side, I've left the cutouts, which is uh, where my uh, D25 for the parallel port back to my Gecko drive is going to go, and here the other interface connections. The side here on the left hand side is now going to be left nice and clean. And uh, I'm making this here so that the uh, face side of the plywood is upward when I cut it. I'll be using a 1 8 inch uh, downward spiral bit to get nice clean edges when I cut it. And when I do cut it, this is what I should end up with, uh, two pieces that can go on the side. From here, I'll be able to start building uh, the internal structure I need to hold everything, work out how wide I uh, ultimately end up making it, and then I can go from there. Now, anybody who wants to follow along with this build, you're more than welcome. What I'll do is I will post these files as I go, and I'll update them with any changes that I make. But please be aware, at this stage, this is as far as I've got with the project. I I'm, I'm, haven't already cut it. I'm not weeks ahead. I haven't finished it. What you see here is as far ahead as I've got. So there are liable to be changes uh, that will be made. Now, of course, it could still turn out to be a complete disaster or a total success. We'll just have to wait and find out. That's the exciting bit about it. Now, anybody who's interested in, in uh, Masso-related uh, uh, information, I have started a new channel called CNC Nuts Masso Edition where I plan to post my Masso-related uh, information, tutorials, and things of that nature. If you're interested in Masso, why not check it out and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, just look in the description box below, uh, you'll find a link to it here. Okay, well that about wraps it up for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it, maybe learned something new. If you've got any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.